today. And I trust that uh, you will be impacted, you will be blessed, and your life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Um, let me just take these books out of the way. I've written 108 books, and I write books that have to do with what can take you to the future. This one is called 30 Reasons Why You Should Own Your Own Company. Because you see, you cannot inherit your father's position in the Ministry of Works. But a company can continue. As I was driving to come here, I saw a building almost opposite the turning into Waek and the road Faramobi House. I know the family. It's one Mr. Adela, Adela Gum, who used to live in uh, Tokumbo Street in Lagos Island. His company was inherited by his children. Your children can inherit your company. That is how wealth is created. Wealth is not created through jobs. I'm going to really, so let me begin to hurt your feeling from the beginning now. If you are a salaried person, that is not where you are going to be a millionaire. There is nobody in Nigeria who earns one million dollars. Anyone you see who is demonstrating a life of more than one million dollars, there is another way is making that money. So, but if you have your own company, nobody can restrict you. Is somebody hearing me? Praise God. Second, the, the greatest way people are creating wealth today is through creativity. Three companies in the United States of America right now have a wealth base bigger than Africa. Uh, when this meeting is over, you can always check it. The GDP of the whole of Africa is 3.2 trillion. Am I correct? Uh, 3.2 trillion. That's the GDP of the whole of Africa. Dollars. Whereas Microsoft is worth 1 trillion. Amazon is worth 1 trillion. You just take two or three companies in America and they have the value of the whole of Africa. And when you look at those companies, they have no products. Amazon does not produce anything. They just, they just carry things from one place to the other. Creativity is what will change people's lives. Many do not realize the future is in the hand of those who are creative. There's nothing about Facebook. It's not a book. It's not a face. It's just a meeting point of people. In this book I wrote intensely ex and explained how a creative dimension can change your life. I remember sharing the content with Bishop Oedebo before he, uh, I, took the, I told him about the book and the content. He said, I need a copy right now. I said, okay, I'll send it. I forgot two days. I kept getting calls from him. I need that book. <laughs> So you need it for yourself too, I'm telling you. This one is about leadership. Marks of an irrepressible leader. Uh, unique qualities of unsurpassable leadership, 35 marks. The difference between Europe, Africa, America, Asia is in leadership. Every nation rises to the quality of their leaders. If your leaders are poor, you will perpetually be poor. This is uh, the Power Positive Prayer Bible. I'm the only one on earth who have produced a prayer Bible with 15,000 prayer points inside and 4,000 scriptures to go with it. It will really transform your life. How many are ready for this morning session? Let me see your hand if you are ready. How many would like to be really really blessed let me see your hand how many would like to be blessed to the point of at least having a million dollars 
two million dollars, three million dollars, four, ten. All right, put your hands down. We ask you to close your eyes. How many? I'm going to take a survey before I start teaching. If you have, so all eyes closed. If you have 10 million naira, raise your hand. 20 million naira, raise your hand. 30 million naira, raise your hand. Just keep it raised. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 1 million. Two, three, four million, five million, six. All right, can I open your eyes. I was doing my survey because um, I run a whole money master class in the United Kingdom. You can check it out. People are also on my platform from Nigeria. They pay a lot of money every month. The things I teach there. I'm just going to share with you what we do in our free webinar. We have a paid webinar. Let me start from the challenge in the body of Christ. When I took the survey just now, it shows very clearly that the summit on finance is needed in this church it is needed in our church it is needed in all the churches because you see money answers all things that is the truth you need money to be able to make a difference money bought this place so there are 300 scriptures in the Bible on prayer. How many did I say? 300 on prayer. But there are 2,350 scriptures on finance. 2,350 on finance. Jesus spoke 37 parables. 23 of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. 23 over 37 times 100 over 1 equals to 61%. 61% of the parables of Jesus had to do with finance. And yet you find that even when we, I still remember when I went to Bible school, they will train you and they make you feel like you are guilty to challenge people to give to the Lord. When I talk today about becoming a millionaire, I, will, I might not talk about uh, giving to the church. It might be one of the points I make at some point. But I want you to capture what, where I'm trying to go. one percent of the parables of Jesus are on finance so was finance important to Jesus of course but you find that when you begin to challenge people to see to change their mind they don't understand they love what the colonial masters have created in Nigeria they created a job mentality job mentality that's why 5 a.m. on the way to VI, the roads are jammed. On the way to the island, the roads are jammed. Is it not so? Then, from 3 to from 3 p.m. to come back to the main land, the roads are jammed. The same rat race every day. The same rat race every day. The same rat race every day. Because the colonial masters, when they came to Africa, they didn't come to create wealth. They came to raise a civil service that will serve them. And they did that very well. 
so they created a mindset of job people our schools were to create people who know how to find jobs and a job only keeps you j-o-b just over broke i told you it's going to be rough and i've not even started yet so if you want to create wealth you have to realize you have to come to the point where you realize that you need your own vehicle for the creation of wealth somebody say my own vehicle oh please say louder my own vehicle so 61 percent of the parables of jesus had to do with finance tell me some of the parables you know i can't hear you please huh parable of the talent talent in the bible is not the ability to sing it's not the ability to dance ah oh my any talent the talent there was a gold was like a gold bar a gold bar you know they they will they will they will melt gold and make a bar of one kilo one kilo of gold right now is at this money's value is thirty four thousand dollars so when jesus said a man was given five talents three two talents one talent the talent in the day of jesus today's value is five hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars so the man who was given one talent was given half a million dollars the one who was given two talent was given one million dollars how many can manage a business with half a million dollars let me see your hand you are not raising your hand what do you ah let me even tell you quickly a principle of business too much to start with is not the best even a little to start with is best because it keeps you on your cutting edge so when jesus talked about talent what those people were given were serious money exactly the amount that was given to ali kodangote it was given half a million dollars by his uncle that was what was given to those men the one who had one talent and buried it he didn't say because it was inadequate he said because he didn't want to spend his time and to be working hard for one man so so many of the parables of jesus had to do with finance another parable the parable of the lost coin luke chapter 15 has three parables there lost silver lost son lost sheep s s s lost silver lost son lost sheep the lost silver was the woman's dowry she kept looking for it because she knew that without it in hebrew culture they pasted the dowry on their head they pasted it on their head and the thing fell the lost son was the prodigal son who collected his his uh, inheritance before the father died whereas the will of a testator does not come into effect until a testator dies the lost sheep is the story of a man who left his capital to go and look for his profit he had 99 sheep the, the one the one lost was his profit if he doesn't look for it then he is at a loss so the bible is full of all, all through the scriptures all the parables of jesus had to do with finance and one more then i begin my teaching huh the parable of the sower fantastic shows you investment many people it isn't that money have not gone through their hand but they don't know where to put it either that they are throwing it by the roadside heavy parties in spite of covid particularly the yorubas the yorubas love party so no covid or no covid they will still hold party they'll throw the seed by the roadside and then some people in business they throw the seed 
among the thorns that choked it and some again will throw the seed on hard ground businesses that have no evidence that they can do well so listen the scripture is so full 2350 scriptures have to do with finance it is the desire of God to prosper you to increase you and unless you come to that place where you begin to change your thinking even when I finish today there is a limit to what I can do the number one thing that must change is your thought pattern your thought and your talk your thought and your talk if you don't change your thinking and your talking no one can make you wealthy but when you begin to change your thinking and change your talking then your wealth can come but you meet christians nigerians they say ah, i just want to make heaven whole as if it was money that would make a man not to make heaven your thinking and your thought because as a man thinks so is he your thought has capacity to limit your life or to increase your life your thought has capacity to shut you down or to blow you up then your talk if you learn the power of talking right and talk yourself into prospering then things can change many believers will hear teaching on prospering but they do not realize that unless I begin to wash my head my mind wash away all the kind of things that were said into my life when I was young by my father and the people around me who accepted poverty we have statements that justify poverty that's why we're saying change your thought statements like money does not grow on trees who told you it depends on which tree you are referring to statements like uh, uh, remember the son of who you are if you don't change your thought and if you don't change your talk you can't come into wealth creation so this morning I want you to realize that God wants you to prosper but before you can there are foundations you have to lay for yourself when you lay those foundations you can then increase in wealth I'm going to share as much, many as I can in the next 40 minutes. Number one, develop the right perspective on wealth. What's your opinion about wealth? The right perspective on wealth. What do I mean by the right perspective on wealth? You left church. You found yourself on the Korodu Road. As you were standing, two cars collided one broken down small Volkswagen Beetle have just collided with uh, a Bentley and the Bentley was damaged when you looked at it how did you feel did you feel that good for him all this all this money misrode driving a Bentley in this Lagos that is your attitude to wealth I was at Abuja to preach in January I was picked up from the airport in a Bentley Mulsanne that's one of my dream cars I like Bentley Mulsanne and the Rolls Royce Phantom I'm not going to drive any other Rolls Royce except Phantom as we were driving we got to a point an Okada man was passing by and he said something like 419 that's his attitude to wealth that's the problem until you begin to change your attitude to wealth it's impossible for wealth to flow to you because money is currency and it goes where it is respected it is currency it flows it has a flow it is like a water current that's why it is called currency 
So it's flowing to some people and it's flowing away from some. There are some people even when they don't leave home, it's still flowing to them. So it sees us in a Bentley and the next thing is 419. You must have the right attitude to wealth. What is the right attitude to wealth for the believer? 2 Corinthians 8, 9. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Consider ye the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that he was so very rich. Yet he became so very poor. That through his poverty ye might be rich. And God is able to make all grace abound unto you. In that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto all good works. Job 36 11 if they obey and serve him they will live their years in pleasure and their days in prosperity Isaiah 1 19 if you are willing and obedient you will eat the best of the land so your attitude to wealth and your perspective on wealth must change you must see that wealth is good I like you to scream, wealth is good. Oh, I want you to say it one more time, wealth is good. The day is going to come when members of this church, just one, will buy this kind of building for HCC. Shout amen with fire. Wealth only goes bad when it is wealth without a mission. Did you hear me? When it is wealth without a mission wealth must always have four missions mission number one must be to meet the need of your family mission number two must be to serve the Lord mission number three must be to touch your world mission number four must be to make your own life good to make your own life good whoever says money is evil he has not had money so the first one is to have the right perspective on money the second one is to make your service count if you want wealth to flow to you what kind of service are you offering if you don't have a business and a service that counts nobody's going to come to you what do i mean by making your service count i'm saying do something do a business which people want to do business with you and you make your service count if you are selling if you are selling bananas make it the best banana selling shop although you can't become a millionaire by selling bananas uh, let me just see how much of all these principles i should share with you i will okay listen the, the difference between people who do business and those who eventually becoming millionaires is that millionaires multiply themselves you can't be a hairdresser and be a millionaire the only way you can be a millionaire is to have 50 shops in lagos where you are doing hairdressing and each one of them is coming back to you every day with twenty thousand naira in each of those 50 shops 20 20 000 naira times 50 shops how much is that one million naira every day but you see this one is there speaking it and they are doing hair in one place and they are wondering why am i not breaking through it is called it is called I just don't know how many of the principles to share in this 45 minutes that's why i'm just all over the place so you got don't forget that the reason many never become millionaires because there are four kinds of people in lagos four the poor the middle class the rich and the wealthy four kinds of people the poor the middle class the rich and the wealthy the poor once in a while encounter money me 
middle class. They have an education, a nice car, and accommodation. And they feel like they have arrived. And they don't realize they just have a middle class life. The reason many families who create wealth lose it is that the man who worked hard to create the wealth raised middle class children sends them to harvard oxford cambridge those ones now came speaking like parrots but cannot run anything so they have a middle class life am i making sense to you you people are so quiet so there are four kinds of people in lagos the poor how do you rate poverty poverty is if you cannot survive 90 days without a salary you are poor doesn't matter how much you earn if you lose your job today and you can't survive three months you are poor and the bible even has three grades poor poor or poorest bible says one man came and invaded israel and carried people away then he left the poorest and you want liability so there's the poor then there's the middle class the middle class a good chunk of people who live like i do in lekki are middle class and they don't realize that they are not wealthy all they have is the car some professional job they are either renting or okay let's say even if they own a house but they are middle class then the third is the rich the rich person truly has made money is probably worth more than a million dollars but he likes to show it he likes to show it wealthy people who are really wealthy unless you know them closely or you see the impact of what they are doing they are not the one to wear designer things per se whenever i want to fly whenever i want to fly i'm always observing when we're at the boarding gate the guys who are carrying all manners of louis vuitton uh, all kinds of names when they, they begin to call us to come in as you come on me long wall i expect to meet them in first class i fly first class i expect to meet them there i don't see them because they want to show that they are rich but the wealthy don't of necessity do that are you getting something i said are you getting something so listen god wants you to be wealthy psalm 66 12 says you've caused men to ride over our heads we've been through fire and through water but you brought us out and into a wealthy place i'd like you to scream wealthy place say louder wealthy place say one more time wealthy place if i don't go very far in what i teach today because i just i'm saying in my head here what do i teach these people let me just quickly tell you a wealthy place requires a vehicle to take you there let me to put deuteronomy 28 from verse 5 to 12 on the screen deuteronomy 28 verse 5 to 12 on the screen you need a vehicle to take you to the wealthy place bless you your basket be somebody say basket okay go down go on go on and blessed shall thou be when thou comest from blood. go to verse 8 verse 8 verse 8 upon your storehouse okay now leave verse 8 there the lord shall command the blessing upon thee 
in the storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto do and she shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee there's also another place where it says he will bless your hand the work of your hand I don't know which verse one of the verses says he will bless the work of your hand so I want you to take note in Deuteronomy 28 there are three vehicles work of hand basket storehouse work of hand basket storehouse work of hand is salary and that's all it just fills your hand basket is small business SME small and medium enterprise storehouse Deuteronomy 28 verse 8 is when you are now hiring 50 people 100 people that is a storehouse business so if you want to get to the wealthy place you need to have your vehicle that will take you there the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure they have to give thee rain on, to give rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand all right so this one talks of hand and that's the problem like I told you the colonial masters taught us to just be people who worked hand hand before they came our people were business people albeit limited if a hunter if a man is a hunter that's what he did and you had to buy from him if a man is a farmer you had to buy from him whatever he did was his but then they took away the business capacity and listen listen there is no CEO of a Nigerian bank on a salary of a million dollars. None. Of course, they will get through shares and dividends that will qualify them to say, okay, they get that much. But in salary, there is not, not, we must not even talk of public service. The official salary of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is 1,026,000 Naira. 26, Naira. 1,026,000 Naira. So, work of hand is limited. The next thing is basket. Someone say basket. Listen to me. Until you have your own business, God cannot transfer to you all that he has been keeping for you until you have your own medium for receiving it you need to have your own basket your own business then after you started your basket you need to now move to the level where you have a storehouse level storehouse level is when you begin to hire other people hire other staff when you enter that level things begin to change so in order for you to really prosper walk in financial dimension to the which God wants you to walk number one you must dream great dreams what's your dream dream great dreams what is your dream what is your dream have a one-year dream a two-year dream a three-year dream a five-year dream a dream of what you want to achieve a dream of the kind of finance you want to have part of my dream was that when my sons will get married to give them a house each and I fulfilled my dream I married into a boys quarter as an assistant pastor in Shomolu four square the church said they can't even pay fully for the boys quarter 130 naira they couldn't pay there was money in the account but they want to they don't want to pay they paid 100 so i prayed that i will give my sons a house and my new vision and which i'm carrying out is being responsible for the education of my grandchildren to master's level 
So even the one that is just one plus now, going to a very private play school, 1,500 pounds a month, I'm the one paying for all four grand. It's not an entitlement to my sons. That's the problem of this generation. The feeling of I'm entitled. It is rather a dream of a man who believes in Proverbs 13, 22. A righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But you see, please connect all I'm saying today. You can't leave an inheritance for your children's children if you are doing work of hand alone. So, everyone who's here, and I see a lot of young faces, get your side hustle. Don't resign from your work, but get your side hustle. Start something on the side. As we were, getting, as we were going home yesterday, I saw something. A young man on the road that will eventually lead to my estate. He put on a tie and he's holding three packs of fruit salad to sell. I think it must have just occurred to him if people see me properly dressed they'll know that i'm responsible it's just that i want to do something so if you want to make an impact you cannot but have a great dream number two find a problem to solve many years ago i used to teach that you should follow your passion i have since corrected myself don't follow passion follow problem don't follow your passion find a problem and solve microsoft is solving a computer problem facebook is solving a, a, a relationship problem amazon is solving a logistics problem if you look around nigeria there are a thousand and one problems which you can solve, which you can answer, which you can, either you and a couple of friends can come together. But then if you are coming together with a couple of friends, never do anything word of mouth. It must be clearly written, it must be proper, and it must be legal, and it must be contractual. Uh, when I say contractual, okay, one of the books there, the book on perpetuating wealth, I, I wrote 10 things that make a, an agreement legal. I cover every area when it comes to wealth creation. You need to find a problem. Find a problem. Many years ago in this Lagos, we all drank water from the tap. So three friends started the first bottled, bottled water. What was the name? Ragolis. R A standing for Rashid, R A G standing for Rashid Badamosi, and then his friends at the O L I S. Yeah, three men. They solved the problem. They saw that it is being done abroad, so they brought it here. Today, everyone is, of course, every time you start something new, Nigerians will copy. They will copy it right, Papa. But find a problem and solve. That is where your wealth that's where your wealth is. That's where your wealth is. Stop saying I studied and I have a degree. Uh, it is not in Nigeria alone anymore. In the UK now, a thousand degree holders are pursuing one job. So don't you ever think it's only Africa. Find a problem and solve. Find a problem and solve. I'm giving you the practicals of wealth creation now. I could shout and pour oil on you and go. But the reason the church continues to struggle is that the principles that lead to wealth, many have disconnected. They say, but I bring my tithe. Your tithe is not the source of your wealth but it is your access gates. You want me to prove it? Put Malachi 310 on the screen. Your tithe is your access gate to your wealth. 
Malachi 3.10. Help me to put it on the, on the screen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Prove me now and see uh, here with said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out, what? Huh? No, no, no. A. Why A? A blessing. An idea. A window. A creative idea. So God does not drop money on you because you tithe it. After I bring my tithe, I should wait for a creative idea. A blessing. He said I will open, in fact, King James, windows of heaven there. The word there is not windows of heaven. It's floodgate. A floodgate is used to lock out water. We have it on the River Thames in London. Because the east of London is below sea level. Sometimes they lock it when the sea rises because it can flood East London. So God is saying, I will flood your life with abundance. But the abundance I'm going to flood your life with is a blessing. A blessing. A window. A creative idea. A, a connection. And many have been given connection but they didn't know how to use it. Follow a problem and solve it. Follow a problem and solve it. Number three, find your unique gift. What's your gift? What's your ability? Find your unique gifting. Find and develop your unique gift. Find and develop your unique gift. Find and develop your unique gift. Find it, develop it. Because your future is in the gifting that God has placed in you. To one, he gave five talents, each according to his ability. Find your unique gift, the skill in which you are trained. The natural ability and inborn traits you have. The supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. Do not spend your life in what you are not good at. Look at what look at your life and check what got you the most result that's where your gift area is find your unique gift and develop it and after you've developed your unique gift begin your business then when you begin your business i've just told you how to really break into the millions open multiple sites multiply your time if you don't multiply your time you can never really enter the realms of abundance you have to multiply your time you have to have several places running at the same time are you getting something I said are you getting something number four see yourself as self-employed see yourself as self-employed unless you reach the place where you understand that my own business my own vision is what will work for me you may not be able to break into the realm of finance you desire see yourself as self-employed even now when you are working for someone think of a of the company like yours put your strength in it help them while they are while you are working for this man put all your strength because when you now face your own the way you behaved here is the way you will behave in your own if you are faithful in another man's thing you'll be faithful in your own many years ago my father-in-law used to be a furniture maker along with pastoring before he came full time and he would train men he had one guy who came to learn to be a furniture maker but this guy when other apprentices are working hard we never do anything other apprentices will challenge him and say but you're not doing anything you see I'm reserving my energy for when I start my own business up till now he's still in reserve because if you are not faithful in another man's thing you can't be faithful in yours behave like you are self-employed commit yourself with such strength number five 
commit to excellence be good at something all successful people you know commit to excellence commit to excellence every successful person you know they commit to excellence number six obey the law of demand obey the law of demand is your idea being demanded for is your vision being demanded for don't write a book nobody wants to read don't start a business nobody wants to engage in I know jam wastes people's time and makes people go study what they don't want but if it's possible don't throw yourself into what does not have an atmosphere of demand you see this one what did you read B business administration another one business administration they don't understand the business itself let alone administer it so many are just going because they need to have a degree they need to say i finished in a university obey the law of demand obey the law of demand in such a way that it is something that people need now number seven have an automated and repeatable system have an automated and repeatable system what is automated and repeatable system Op automated and repeatable system means that what i was saying earlier where the person who opened the hairdresser's place the same i think is being repeated in all the shops in all the shops in all the shops 50 shops they were doing so many hair and on from each shop the person is expecting at least twenty thousand. so the repeatable and automated system creates the atmosphere for wealth number eight apply the principle of leverage l-e-v-e-r-a-g-e -E -E. apply the principle of leverage i like you to say leverage please say it one more time leverage apply the principle of leverage you cannot create wealth if you do not know how to leverage what is leverage inside every car outside there there's possibly a jack to lift the car when the tire goes bad how big is the jack compared to the car very small how come it can lift the car because inside the jack 2000 years ago a philosopher called Aesop discovered the lever which is the for the one that is extended called lever or leverage he discovered the lever and it became something being used so that a small thing lifts a big thing if you want to create wealth listen you must be ready for leverage and by leverage i mean opm opk opc not to dwell opm is other people's money how many of you have money in a shavings account i mean savings account how many of you have money in shavings account i can guarantee you they don't give you more than one percent or less the bank is shaving you how much are they giving it out in loans between 15 and 18 so they gave you one percent and they gave it out at what 15. but you know people will still borrow it opm many people talk of dangote's wealth but they don't realize that dangote uses opm other people's money he's using your money he's exposed to all the banks in nigeria 
I am very sure every day those banks are praying down go to Obodo Lolewo, Obodo Lolewo. Because if it goes down, they will go down. He, he owes all of them. He knows how to do business. There is a challenge in the church. Our pastors tell us not to borrow. We need to know which one we should not borrow and which one we should borrow. Never borrow to make your life look nice. That is bad debt. Owe no man anything but love. Proverbs 22 verse 7. The rich rule over the poor. Borrowers are servants of lenders. That is the kind of borrowing you must not get into. Don't get into borrowing that makes you a servant to the lender. But there is the one. If they gave you, I mean, Julius Berger did this Ikorodu Road the first time it was done. How many of you know that it was Julius Berger who did it? I was a student in Ikorodu Bible School, and I have to follow this road whenever I came to town. So I knew it was Julius Berger doing this road that time. Julius Berger will not put their penny down. They will collect money from a bank. That's how big businesses do their work. Where you have the cash to do it, fine. But di dilution is necessary for expansion. Dilution is necessary for expansion. I have a 10, 15 more, 10, 12 more minutes. So listen. You need to use other people's money. Other people's money. Don't go and borrow for nothing's sake. But borrow when you want to carry out a project. Don't say, ah, and they taught us not to borrow. You will not be able to carry out a major project. You will not be able to carry out a major vision of your life. You might need it to be able to do some things. One of my companies, I have a few companies, about 10. One of my companies is about to build 32 apartments in Lekki. We're going to borrow 40% of the cost of building and raise the remaining in selling, in selling the, the apartments before they are built, during built, during being built, and after. In other words, what you are doing is you are using leverage. You could have struggled. You could have laid the foundation and be waiting for years. But other people's money. The OPC. Other people's credibility. Don't misuse it. But use it. If you know somebody who can endorse you. Someone who can help you. Someone who can push you up. Connect with them. Make them your mentor. Make them your financial mentor. Your financial advisor. Have different kinds of mentors. Have financial mentor. Have spiritual mentor. Have mentors in the area where you want to, pro you want to prosper. You need OPC. Other people's credibility. You need OPK, other people's knowledge. Other people's knowledge. You need it. There are about, there are about seven of those OPs. I can't give all of them to you now. Number nine. Create multiple streams. Create multiple streams. In the book of Genesis, Genesis, I believe chapter 1, the Bible says the river that came out of Genesis, out of Eden, broke into four and flowed in four directions to water the land. Why will God create four rivers for one garden? When only Adam and Eve are still living there. That, show, that shows you multiple streams. Four streams. If they can find that verse for me, I'll be glad. 
False dreams flowed out of Eden. But many of us are living on one stream. Salary. That's why we cannot afford to lose the job. Whereas when you have false dreams, it means if one is not flowing well, the second is flowing. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Next verse. The name of the first is Pison, that is, which compasses the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. This one, Pison, means free flow. Every month it is just free flowing. Every month, free flowing. Next one. Go on. The next verse, please. The next verse. And the name of the second river is Gaihon. This one means sweet water. Sweet river. There should be an income in your life which is it's a quiet, ah, you know, you are eating the thing, the people don't know money is coming to you from this area. This is the second river. Third river, and the name of the, the name the same composite the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. Hidekel is like an arrow. Rapid like an arrow. Rapid like an arrow. Non-stop. Hitting the target. That kind of favor is coming to your house. That kind of income is coming to your life. That kind of breakthrough is coming to your life. So this third one, Hidekel. Rapid like an arrow you've seen those kind of river they will be shooting it's moving rapid like an arrow the fourth river is the river euphrates the word euphrates is the same word as fares or many many tekel fares fares in it fares fares euphrates means breakthrough so the fourth river in your life should be the river of breakthrough money. Breakthrough kind of money. That when it arrives like this, even your neighbors know that something has happened to you. The music changes, your attitude changes. Four rivers. If you don't have four rivers, you just struggle. That's the truth. And guess what? Dangote has 63 rivers. He has 63. 63 companies. But believers, we're all busy just speaking in tongues. We do not realize that God has created a platform. You have to do something to make it flow to you. Four of us. So you need to create multiple streams. I like you to say multiple streams. Say it one more time. Multiple streams. Say it louder. Multiple streams. Please. When a person is teaching on finance like this, there's never enough time. So what I'm trying to let you know is that it's great you have a job. You're able to put food on your table. But your life is bigger than that. And if anybody asks you, why do you want to be wealthy? Tell them, you do more good with wealth. You can never do any good with poverty. I told stories here yesterday of uncles who would not help me when I was young. And today I grab all their grandchildren and send them to university. Not just them. Pastor talked about coming to meet me on the golf course here in the Keja Golf. I was playing golf one day. And the girl who was helping us pull our bags spoke very good English. And I thought, ah, you speak very well. What are you doing? Why are you here doing caddy job? She said, I've tried jam five times. And I've not had admission. I just sent her to Ghana, pay her university fees. Four years. Her mom is a cleaner at the airport. 
Her father is in Portaco. The family is in disarray. The girl will be graduating this July. The second one, her mom sells rice to the people at the university, at the golf course. She came to me. Hey, I want to go to Polytechnic. I sent her. When she finished OND, I didn't even. I said, Is that what you want? When she finished OND, she came back. I finished OND. I want to go and do HND. Why do you want to do HND? Nigeria has an attitude towards HND. Why don't you do university? She said, Ah, they, I just called my son in Ghana who has a university. This girl did uh, hospitality and hotel management, and that's what you offer in your school. So yes, yeah, she can come straight away. She went. She entered 200 level there. I'm paying her school fee. I don't know. I don't even know. I, do, I think her dad may have died a long time. I don't know her siblings. I met her mom once. One of the women, the woman who sells rice to the people there. You do more good. You do more good. You touch lives. You bring dignity to people, not just yourself. One of my cousins passed on. I practically adopted her daughter and her son. Picked her daughter out of all those Meron place. You know Meron? Emma. Emma, Emma. Picked her out of those Meron place. Send her to Lautech made her live alone in her own room everything in fact they were voting her the most sophisticated girl on campus as she finished send her to university of bedford paid thirty-four thousand pounds to see her through a master's degree broke cannot do that Whereas her grandfather mocked my father. My father picked a pot of cola nut when he went on holiday as a soldier. When he was on leave and he picked a pot of cola nut and over. Yeah. As he saw for Kowa Dako Dako. When God blesses you, you are able to touch lives. You are able to make impact. I can't begin to recount catalogs of how many people I've sent to university. I just can't recount. In fact, when our university took off in Odeo King's University, belonging to KRCC, the first year was 100% scholarship, and 40% of it was me and my wife paying for other people's kids journalists will never see that they are less they only abuse churches i'm about to close so remember create that platform then find something that multiplies your money real estate multiplies money Creating a good business multiplies money. And uh, if you understand the stocks and shares, they can multiply your money. But if I were you, I would look at real estate in Lagos. Don't let our money let discourage you. There is wealth to be made in Nigeria. There's wealth to be made in Lagos. In case you don't realize. What I taught you today, I practiced. When I was a young man, at the age of 14, I started selling for other people. So when I was a young pastor, when I lived in the place I told you, at the age of 27, I built my first house. How did I build it? As a bachelor pastor, this particular spot where we are in, it's part of my story. There used to be a union bank outside there. I don't know if it's still there. That's where I bought my first BTA, Basic Travel Allowance. 
they'll give you 560 pounds if you bring 500 naira naira was so powerful i was given 560 pounds i went to england and then i went to italy bought musical instruments next door here used to be the cross bookstore i don't know if they're still there no longer there i will leave the musical instruments there and i will sell i'll give them a token for my space where i was keeping my instruments i'll bring drum sets i'll bring guitars i bring keyboards i built the first house i saved money to go to canada to do my masters when foursquare now said go to england to pastor for us i took the money to england but still kept buying musical instruments to nigeria kept buying musical instruments as the musical instrument was doing well reverend chris jordan i will never forget him christ chapel dropped the seed in my spirit it was the days of abacha or babangida or abacha i'm not sure but you cannot carry currency out of nigeria so this man said why don't you bring books into nigeria for us we can't find christian books that's how i started matison media i don't know if anyone ever knew of matison media used to be the biggest bookstore christian in nigeria we were on jibo where ekene dilichuku is now and we were also on allen we became representatives of 30 publishers in america 30 publishers you wanted their books they'll tell you go and meet martison media god kept giving me different streams as the money from the books came i didn't know what to do that's how somebody told me oh someone wants to sell land in Mowe. will you buy i said yes what's available they said 30 acres i bought 30 acres then i went back and bought another 200 then i went back and bought another 411 then i went back until i bought 900 acres don't be jealous say praise god can you see the chain link in my various streams my various streams i learned when i was a young man i first went to cac before i went to fosco and i saw how ministers were not properly paid so i made up my mind i have a calling but i'll run my business because i knew i have an anointing for business god has prospered my hand and has prospered what i have done uh, i only refer to the moe land there are others but see you need a vehicle real estate is a vehicle don't tell me but pastor i don't have much pay off your debt first one two yeah i have mocked savings accounts but if that's all you can find put your money there three once you find a people who are selling land even if it is far but it has good documentation buy in property property is like five fingers finger number one is documentation if document is not good don't touch because if you go to court the court recognizes documentation first occupation second if you are in occupation of the land you have a second upper hand three development if you have done even if it's fencing you did you have document you occupied you developed ah you have a voice so even if it's one plot you want to know why when i was a young pastor there we were the ones who bought land for four square coca three thousand naira we were the ones who bought land for four square in solo one thousand naira and we bought two plots near uh what's the name of the area now a palace ago palace there are now plots for 100 million in ago palace don't tell yourself ah it's difficult 
Yeah, I used to think that way. When I was a young pastor there, somebody asked me if I wanted a plot in Okwebi. That time it was 500 Naira. I couldn't afford it, but I went back and bought for 10 million. Did you ever visit me in my house in Okwebi? Okay. And then I sold, I think it's the land the guy bought, not the house. I sold it for 150 million. I built a house on it. The guy bought it and broke down the house. So it must be the land he wants. I bought it 10 million, built for 55. It cost to 65, sold it for 150. Yes, you are taught to be profitable. How many of you are ready to really be profitable? Listen, look at me. You are going to so prosper and you are going to do well. I just told you now. Somebody will ridicule you. That Union Bank, the reason I remember it was that they were not processing my, my BT. No, the first BT I ever bought was National Bank Marina. I don't think National Bank exists anymore. It was National Bank Marina, first one, 1978, 43 years ago, was my first uh, BTA. My second BTA was this Union Bank. They were not processing it on time. I had a shavings account. And they had no respect for savings account in those days. So when I was screaming, you are not processing my basic travel allowance on time. One woman answered that on the, from her desk. What kind of account do you have here? I said, I have a savings account. She said, you have no account, my son. That was the day I made up my mind. I must be blessed. I shall be wealthy. So listen. I see your story change. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for watching today's video. This channel is brought to you by HopeLify.org to inspire you to become the very best that you were designed to be. Remember, a few simple keys, mastered and consistently applied, are often all we need to excel in each area of life. You can help make this channel even better in three simple ways. One, subscribe to receive more videos. Two, leave a comment below to let me know what resonates with you from today's video. Or three, suggest a topic for a video that you will like for us to feature on this channel. Visit Hopelify.org to post your own inspirational content.